Welcome back to another episode of It's in the Details. As always, please remember to share, like, subscribe, rate, review, comment, wherever you get the show. This is an interesting episode. Uh, Mostly because it's not just one episode. So what we have here is, you know how, um, I'm sure all of you, you have that family member or family members whom whenever they show up, you never know what's going to happen. That's not the family members on this show. I expected to know (laughs) uh, what was going to happen when I sat down to record with them. Uh, What I did not expect is we traversed all sorts of interesting topics, um, current events and, and dating and all sorts of things that do tie back into TV and movies. Um, but we went long. We went really, we, we had a good talk. Um, so an atypical experience produces atypical results. So what we're going to have over the next two weeks is you were going to get two episodes, not one, but two episodes, uh, featuring my cousins and I, um, a few things I'd like to clear up because we do, and I don't even know if they need to get cleared up, but I'm just going to put it off the top. Um, There's a discussion about folks making babies, okay? I'm not telling you how to live your lives. These are just some thoughts I have, okay? You'll hear it relatively early in the episode. But you want to make babies? Make babies. Do do what you got to do. The second thing, uh, uh, snacks. You know I like to talk about the snacks. I like to find out what snacks people are eating. Um, I mention popcorn or they mention popcorn in the episode, and I reference Gardetto's popcorn, which, to the best of my knowledge, is not a thing. It's actually a snack I used to have uh, when I'd go to the States, had pretzels and, 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 and pita chips and all sorts of things in it. It's not Gardetto's. What it is, and this is a little bit of a fast track, it is Garrett's popcorn. This is a Chicago thing. You'll hear it in the podcast. But I remembered it before I released it, so Garrett's Popcorn, not Gardetto's. Both, both companies make delicious snacks, okay? Um, but even though it was atypical, uh, a podcast unlike any other podcast I've done, for the most part, uh, I had such a great time with my two cousins. Um, just, I mean, we're, we're, we're close in age, so we kind of sort of grew up together and I'm older than they are. So watching and and listening to the women that they've become was it's not proud, it's like a more of an awe inspiring. Like happy to know them, happy to call them family, um smart, funny, intelligent, inquisitive, curious, beautiful cousins. Here we go. Sheena and Julia. Uh, the, the, wor- the world is an interesting place right now. Um, did, were, did you guys, are you guys young enough? I'm going to say young enough because I did not feel young enough. Were, are you guys young enough that when um, George Floyd was murdered, that you hit these streets and were protesting? Was I young enough? Am I young enough? I feel like that that was the threshold for me. Like if I was 10 years younger, I probably would have been in these streets with some signs. But I was like, I'm a little old to be in these streets with these signs. So I didn't I didn't go. Yeah. Right? I didn't realize it was an age thing, but maybe it is an age thing. And and yeah, I think I'm I was too old to be on those streets. Because- I don't for me, I don't think it was an age thing. It was like you said, like the, the cooties in the air. Like I'm mm. not yeah. Um, for me, like I've seen like images of what could happen to protesters. And right. It's too scary for me. Like physically, I don't think that I could have done that. For me, I have to like kind of do my activism in other ways, just not 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 um, protesting. But I have to like big up protesters because I can't do it myself. I appreciate them even more. So, mm-hmm. like, yeah, chant, hold up your signs. You know, we're 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 behind you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, that's uh, for real. Like we're getting a little bit serious, but like for real, <laughs> I, 
I had been spending some time trying to reconcile the fact that I didn't go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I felt something about not, and I'm downtown. So the protest would like literally blocks away at certain points. Mm-hmm. And I'd go for runs. Uh, I'd go for runs at certain point, like down Adelaide or down um, Queen street, like in that area. And like Eaton center was boarded up and like, so creepy. yeah, financial district was like boarded up. And I started to look around at the city, like, so this is what you think <laughs> about the people that live in this city. Like you think looting is a definite thing that's going to happen when people that are upset about inequality and racism show up to peacefully protest. Right. This is how you guys are getting down. So it was weird. It was a weird thing because I've never really been that active um, in all of that stuff. So for it to meet, to meet at this time with everything happening, I was like, should I be out there? Is anybody else out there? Yeah. Um, so it's it's interesting to hear you guys say, nah, I, I didn't do it either for a multitude of reasons. For, yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, sometimes I think like the biggest form of activism is just, just being you and mm-hmm. taking it day by day and just, you know, just meeting your personal goals because you're being an example for other people and if you put too much on yourself, you're not going to be able to deliver, right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. What also, a- I'm very emotional, so I feel like I'd just be like in the streets, like crying. That's not going to help yeah. anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I, I, I know I had some of that shit. Like whenever, whenever I get extremely passionate, I go from I'm fine to oh fuck, I'm about to cry. Yeah. Like instant, like there's no middle ground for me too. So I think if I saw some people out there um, either in peril with people trying to stop you from protesting or just like they've clearly seen stuff I haven't seen, like you could see the passion on their faces. I think I would be like you, Sheena. I might just, <laughs> I might just be breaking down. I'm like, what the, what? I came out here to fight for our rights. Yeah. <laughs> And, and now I can't see shit because my eyes are full of tears. It's just like, it's weird, right? Yeah. But. No, with this younger generation, they're mad. They're mad. So we don't have to be mad anymore because yeah, they, they the have best. our anger. Like, they're mad. They're assertive. They're doing their thing. I was talking to my, my, my big brother boy uh, about this last night when we recorded and the pandemic, right? So I heard last week in the United States, 72,000 children <laughs> had tested positive for this virus. Right? You know what, I guess they weren't testing the kids before. Is that like, what? Possibly, it could be the mutations that are being easily transferred to the ch- whatever it is, right? And I was like, the problem is, these little beige children that are being made left and right in in the world now, right? They're all beige. They're all angry, right? They don't care if John wants to be with Dave. They don't care if Steve wants to be Sarah. They don't give a fuck, right? And they are changing the world. I just can't wait to to watch the movie about this. (laughs) (laughs) It's gonna be live. It's gonna be, it's gonna be scary. Um, have you watched, uh, have you watched, I guess, have you watched any of Michael Moore's documentaries? Like Bowling for Columbine. I think that, that that's a- the one? Yeah. And uh, then, there was one other one after that. I think I watched that one. There was but- Fahrenheit 9-11. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then I think the next one was Fahrenheit 11-9. And Fahrenheit 11-9, it's on Amazon Prime. That one he's really digging into um, the water and things like that in Michigan and like the crazy corrupt people in Michigan uh, were, they were getting their water from Lake Michigan. And then they stopped letting the people in certain areas of Michigan, the black areas, Latino areas, they stopped getting their water from Lake Michigan and they started getting it from some river um, like Michigan River or Detroit River or some bullshit, and people were drinking lead. Oh, 
right? So it's like the people in Detroit haven't had clean water as, as of the documentary, it was like 1500 days. It was like four or five years, these people haven't had clean water. And to make it even more corrupt, the Ford plant in Michigan was on that same river water. And the river water started fucking up the vehicles they were making in the Ford plant. And they diverted them off of the river water back onto the lake water, the Ford plant, but not the people, right? I thought you were gonna say the people and it was only because of the Ford plant and that was what we were gonna be angry about. They oh. kept the people on the dirty lead river water and they moved the Ford people onto the clean lake water, right? And I haven't cried at a movie or documentary since Soul Food when Big Mama died, okay? <laughs> that was it. That's like the only time. And I, that damn documentary almost got me because I was like, it's been years these people haven't had clean water and they refuse to fix it. And everybody knows about it. And I think there was like, there's like a website, like does Flint, Michigan have clean water yet or something like that? And there's just a tally running. And like you got Jaden Smith, you know, little Jaden Smith, he started making box water and then he started making like a water purifying system that like he sent to Michigan or whatever. Like it's like individual things you have to have. And I'm like, Jaden Smith is doing more to fix the water in Michigan. Can I just say Michigan? <laughs> I haven't listened to any of it. Me neither. What about Willow? Uh, she, I don't, I haven't listened to any of her music. I don't really know too much about her. She's just very interesting to me. Yeah. She's a little bit threatening to me because she's like a little like the new generation. Like, what are you? Like, you know? Yeah. That's what the beige children don't want to, they don't want to answer that question. <laughs> I am me. <laughs> they, they, sorry. Yeah. They, yeah. They, oh, yeah, I that's, exactly. <laughs> I am they. What, what is your pronoun? What, what is your pronoun? <laughs> <laughs> can we i actually, are so finger you, guns allowed of course <laughs> you when we said who's going to be the good cop and who's going to be the bad oh cop, yeah you said you're going to be the good cop oh yeah I'm the good cop. You're the bad cop. is is there an interrogation about to happen is <laughs> what this we, what this is? <laughs> no, for, for real you, i i assume you guys have zero feelings on people and their pronouns oh no we do have feelings about oh that. you do have feelings yeah what are your feelings our feelings are, um, yeah, so you're I know, speaking for both so sorry, Clearly. My, feeling, my feeling is, is, is it's entirely a lot to digest. I don't even understand what's going on. Right. The bottom line is you got to do what people do to res respect everyone. So right. I'll say they, and I'll say she, he, wh whoever you tell me to, 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 to identify you as I will. Yeah. Sheena? Yeah, no, I feel the same. Like you, whatever you want to be called, I, I'll, I'll respect that. Yeah, and I do, I do, I do acknowledge that it is it's difficult. A lot. It's a lot, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's, I think it's, it, it's, it's worth it. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. It's just for me, it's the same as you being gay. Like I don't give a fuck. I'm happy. What are you healthy? <laughs> Is that person making you happy or whatever? Like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. There's a documentary on Netflix called Disclosure mm -hmm. and it's really good. It kind of talks about like a trans people and like the evolution of trans people. And when you look back just like a few years ago, I think there's a clip that they played from uh, Ace Ventura, the way we used to treat trans people, like they are not human. It's disgusting, mm -hmm. but it was just so mainstream. Like mm -hmm. I remember watching that scene and just saying, ew, yuck. And like, just acting like exactly like the people in the scene and watching it now, I'm just like, what, but that's a person. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just a person. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just a person. I, it, it, it's interesting. Cause I've never, I've never felt that like the, the ew, yuck stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know why. And I'm not like, I'm not look, looking for a pause for it. I just never, I never ever felt it. And then I know at some point I thought it was gross. The eel, the eel yucks, like that reaction to people. I thought it was gross. And now I'm just like, okay, if something sh sh comes across my path and I can just tell people, I think it's gross then I'll take the opportunity to tell people it's gross. Yeah. I'm not going to be marching. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm not going to start a website, but it's like a few people listen to me talk weekly. So if something comes up, I'm going to tell them, yo, this shit is fly. These people are happy. Leave, just let people be people and live their damn lives, man. So yeah, yeah. that's where we are. Yeah. Period. Period. <laughs> period. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have to figure out how to get some of that into the show <laughs> probably <laughs> because some of that stuff was really good and we haven't started yet, but, um, are you guys ready to start or wait, are there any other questions? Um, um I have, um, <laughs> <You're> whispering. <laughs> Julia wants dating advice. Yeah. You talk, you're talking to the wrong person. No, I'm talking to the right person. We'll see. What, 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 what kind of advice are you seeking? Just general like tips, maybe? Like, Don't be Molly from Insecure. OK. <laughs> don't, don't okay. be Molly. OK. Well, that's okay. okay. I'm wait, only wait. two seasons in. So since we talked, I've banged out two seasons. That's amazing. I know. It's, they're, they're half an hour. They're bites. They're just they're bite size. I've been pu- putting them away, man. Okay. But, I feel like this is going to become like a therapy oh, okay, session you're, for me. You got to remember. Because literally me, no, but don't be like Molly Mick. Uh, bro, she was dating like Dro. Remember Dro? I just, okay. So stop talking. Oh. No, no. So uh, Dro just went to her apartment at the end of season two after Molly had told him, I'm done. Uh, I can't do this because they had the thing at Derek's birthday party mm-hmm. where Candace showed up oh, and man. Molly and Dro had been going hard for a while yeah. and then she broke it off and then the season ended with Dro coming back to her house. So if you can't remember what happens after that, we might not be able to talk about too much because yeah, you're going to spoil it. Because you're probably, how many seasons are there now? Four? Four. Okay, so yeah, like the, who was the Dro? Second is Dro the guy that worked at the uh, the used car dealership? Dro is the guy that's thirteen feet tall. <laughs> He's got a little bit of some jacked up oh, teeth. Okay, so what do you mean, don't be a Molly? Because you say don't be a Molly, and when I was watching that show, I was just like, oh my god, that I'm, is I'm me. Molly. <laughs> she even looks like me. Like so, <laughs> I love that look. I love that this, look. I know this. Like okay, so please. I know. I know. I know. I know. Like I need you to break it down. Like this is like like for dummies okay so Pretend i don't know anything so first of all again grain of salt my relationships have not gone so well okay molly but put it this way listen to molly's therapist okay molly's therapist is hidden molly with you know what i hear out of you molly should i should be doing this i should be with a guy like that I should, 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 should. You got to stop living in the should and you should live in the could. Did she not tell I, you to say this? Like, no, no. But yeah, it's, the, it's that it's, um, it's the living in the present shit that I don't feel enough people do for real. It's like, I think people talk about living in the present and then they don't actually live in the present. And it's like, this guy, this guy I want or this girl, the person I want should be this and that. And I mean, well, first of all, once you start talking to somebody, do you like them? Are they fun to be with? (laughs) Like, do they make you feel good? Okay. So, you know, I've never, you know, introduced, I'm getting personal. I've never introduced anyone to the family before. What if I, the first person I brought, uh, he was a rapper. Okay. So he raps. There's no, there's no shoulds. You, you wouldn't be like, oh, well, Julia, maybe you should get someone with more of a steady income or no, pension. No, I think that's exactly what Damien benefits. is saying. Like, live in the moment, kind of get out of that. But You're to thinking- be honest, though, like, there, you do have a lot of people's, like, it's it's not, the shoulds just don't come from you. They Sometimes they come from, like, what you think people will think. But I guess, you that's know. That's what he said to not do. Okay, that's why I said for dummies, yeah. okay? Yeah. <laughs> this, the, the, the other thing, too, and I've been talking to multiple people about this now, is... Um, if you were pregnant in March of 2020, right? You were pregnant already, March 2020. You shoot out a baby whenever you shoot the baby out. Great for you, right? But we've been in this pandemic now for going on two years. If you 
got pregnant inside of this pandemic, I have questions, okay? <laughs> I have questions. Um, do you really, really, really love babies? Like, is that why you got pregnant right now? You must really, really love babies because there's a virus floating around the world that we, we're not really sure how you even get. We like, you get it from the air and people breathing and talking and being in close proximity. And I, that sounds like magic, right? We're not really sure how you get this. Like, we have an idea. Um, uh, about two months ago, a mudslide hit Japan and wiped out a bunch of houses and who knows how many people. Uh, about a month ago, Italy was drowning in fucking torrential downpours. Uh, we're having smog alerts in Toronto because of forest fires happening in Northeast Ontario, right? The, the planet <laughs> is trying to murder us, yeah. right? <laughs> and what you thought during this time was make a baby. <laughs> Let me bring someone helpless into this madness, right? So for me, either you love children so much, fantastic, bring this baby here, right? Or since you were four, people have been asking you if that little kid next to you is your boyfriend or girlfriend. And then they've been telling you, you should get a good job. And then they've been telling you, you got to buy a house. And then they've been telling you, you should get married. And then they've been telling you, you should have kids. Mm -hmm. So people have been programming your life for all these boxes you're supposed to check off. And how many of those decisions did you actually make? Good point. You, you know what I mean? I just feel like a weight like lifting off my shoulders right <laughs> now. I'm like, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs>
But with okay. these, they only have four commercials that they rewind. So it's not like cable commercials. Mm-hmm. So that was a little bit of a bummer, yeah. And you can't skip them. No. You got to watch these same four commercials over and over and over again. It's, it's, really, <laughs> yeah, it's, really, it's like Spotify, like really annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, d- did you make any pandemic purchases to upgrade the watching, the listening, new TV, I mean, new furniture? Subscribing to Crave with HBO, with HBO so that I okay. can watch Power. <laughs> um, I think that's like the, I don't know. I think that's the only pandemic purchase I can think of. I feel like there, I thought we bought something to watch more reality. We were thinking of, oh, Hey You. You're thinking of getting Hey You. Okay. Yeah. But we didn't. Yeah. Didn't, <laughs> didn't get it. Okay. Um, when you're watching stuff, when you found something you guys are ready to get into, what's the snack situation like? Do you snack? I'm not a snacker. I like meals. <laughs> okay. So you get a meal, that's it. Then you're done for the night or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I no don't chips. Eat, I, don't eat, I don't eat chips, no. Jules? Like chips? Like and I am not the type of person to eat a bag of chips and not finish it. Like, oh wow, you're like, you're not you're not talking about personal size bag. You're talking bag. Well, I started to buy personal bags because uh-huh. I'm just finishing it because I'm not trying to waste my chips and it be stale the next day. <laughs> okay. Um, have you have you heard of they sell clips? You could you you could put the bag together and then you could clip it shut. I would prefer to just eat them because. <laughs> I'm great organized and i think that looks disorganized <laughs> okay so I would just okay that. okay uh do you have um a particular chip that you love more than others yeah or is I there like, a range i like lays plain i like doritos plain i wait, love wait, wait, hold, hold, hold. what is a plain doritos, nacho. 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 oh okay okay yeah. i like um i really love those those uh those canada day no those ketchup Doritos. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I've seen them. Label, label. No, it's so fun. It's like old Doritos. No, kid. Do you have it's you so tried fun. ketchup Doritos? I have seen them and left them in the store where they belong. You don't like ketchup <laughs> chips? I like ketchup chips. I, I just haven't tried these ketchup. Dur- Why is ketchup on Doritos? They don't you will love them. They're corny. They're corny. You have the corny flavor, and they have a lot of ketchup flavor. Please try them. Have you put ketchup on a corn on a cob? Ew. I'm not the type. That's gross. I'm not the type of person exactly. to put ketchup on somewhere. I used to be that person. I'm not that person anymore. <laughs> to put ketchup in places it doesn't belong, because I like ketchup. You know, I'll dip it in stuff. But if I smell ketchup when I'm not eating yeah, it, oh, disgusting. really? Yeah. Um. So how do you how do you justify eating these ketchup Doritos? Because a Dorito is not calling for ketchup. It's just so much flavor. You know, it's not just ketchup you're getting. What else? You a ketchup chip. You you get um a bit of like salt and vinegar. I think they put like some salt and... I'm saying like I made chips before, like I know this. But I think there's like other seasonings. In, in the, so the Dorito ketchup. ketchup. You taste like a zap. A zap. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dextrose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually asked Sheena today. I'm like, what is MSG? And she was like, on MSG this morning. Yeah. What is what is MSG? Oh well, you can't throw me on the spot because I don't have the proper terminology. Oh okay. Basically, it's just like it's like science in your mouth. Basically. Yeah, salty science. Yeah, salty science. Salty science in your mouth. Uh, I, I I have seen a lot of our Asian brothers and sisters talking about how MSG got a bad rap, and when used properly, it is just fine. It is not something to worry about. Like. Um, they want us to believe it is, but that's neither here nor there. Um, mm-hmm. Drinks are there? I feel like I feel like my cousins dabble in some wine from now and again. Is that facts? False? Not as often as you would think. I'm not saying you guys are killing a bottle a night. I'm just saying <laughs> you might want a glass every now and again with some TV shows. Is that a possibility? What? It could be wrong. No. Not so often. Um, I like to drink. I mean, if we're drinking, I think we're going to have a beer because it's hot. Okay. We like to drink like a nice craft beer or something local, something with like some flavor and zap to it. Ooh, it's very um, zappy today. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <he's our> <laughs> okay. Yeah, when you're talking about the ketchup chips. Yeah, I'm definitely kidding. <laughs> um, Sheena likes uh, crown and ginger. Um, we like Hennessy and cranberry juice, but these are just like more like this is just drinking. Yeah, this is just drinking. This is not TV and drinking. So the only snack going down in this house is some chips. Oh, popcorn. Oh, yes. I like sweet and salty popcorn. Sweet and salty popcorn. Have you so where what's the brand? Who do you get it from? What's the sweet and salty popcorn that you like? Do you Um, even know? So president, okay, so sweet and salty, okay. (laughs) Popcorn to me, it has to be kettle. I don't want that airy. I don't want that airy shit, okay? Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't tell my mom. I mean, she's like, going to see this. She mm. loves Chicago mix. And I love mm. Chicago mix yeah, too. Yeah, but I like kettle. Like the, it's more crunchy. Uh-huh. And it, the kettle process adds just like an old, it's called old fashioned kettle. So it's like an old school kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Where are you going? I'm going to go just for <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Okay, um, So yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, President's Choice, and then um, Rexall's brand. Okay. Oh, uh, Norton and something. Yeah. Yeah. But don't try to eat Life Brand. Like you got to go to Rexall. Okay. But don't go to Rexall for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take that, Rexall. Um, <laughs> so the Chicago mix your mom likes. Do you know what brand that is? Yeah, she likes uh, President's Choice, or she likes it from Colonel's. Okay. Um, so what I will say to you, because when I first found out about Chicago Mix, I was like, mm, I don't know about this. But what the first time I had it, I think the first time I ever had it was this like boutique popcorn store in Chicago. Oh, no oh, way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think it's called like Gardetto's or I, I might be messing that up, but it's like on the main, it's on like Michigan Ave or whatever. If you ever end up in Chicago again, I don't know. You guys are black like me. I don't think I'm going to the States again. (laughs) It's on Michigan Ave. I think it's called Gardetto's. And it's, uh, they used real cheese. Like the cheese, it would sop through the bag because it was so cheesy and greasy. Actual cheese? Not like like grated cheese, but like the whatever the formula they made the cheese stuff out of, you could tell it was real cheese. and then the the caramel or whatever the the sweet part of the chicago mix is you could bounce those things off tables they were so hard and and, and crispy and crunchy exactly i I know i know you might be able to get it shipped up like maybe i'll keep this out so your mom won't see it but you might be able to get it shipped up get some to your mom and and let her know what real chicago mix tastes like um but so popcorn Sweet and salty popcorn. Are there any other snacks? I like I like to eat a tub of uh, <laughs> of Hagen Dazs. <laughs> like just like yeah, the pie. What yeah. flavor? Um, strawberry, praline, okay. and cookie, vanilla, chocolate, almond. Those yeah. are the ones. Do you? I don't eat it. I don't eat it while I'm watching TV, but like right before I'm going to bed sometimes like, oh. I just come upstairs and like eat it right at the freezer. You know, I was actually so happy that you ate half of that because mm. I was going to just box off the whole thing. So You're the fact that you ate, thank you. Like, yeah. yeah. Got you. Been there, been there. I'm looking around my house like, would somebody eat these goddamn snacks I brought in this house? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't eat this whole pint of haagen Uh I'm partial to the vanilla bean and the coffee myself. Oh, oh yes, the coffee, coffee one is really amazing. Good. I would suggest you get a tub of each, a couple scoops of each, let them mingle in the bowl, and enjoy the deliciousness. But that's just me. When you guys have some time, wait, are you bingers? Do you binge things? I binge things before binging even was a thing. Before okay. It was, oh, there was a word for it. You were ready. Yeah, so in the summer of 28, 20, 2008, <laughs> 2008, uh, we can talk about what no. binge lost. Oh, oh, yeah, I binge lost, but that was on Netflix. I binged The Old Melrose in 2008 uh, with a DVD box set. Yeah. Wow. Uh, was, was that enjoyable? 
Yeah, but we didn't, like, I didn't, there wasn't a word for it back then, but yeah, like, we just literally, me and my cousin, we'd watch it, like, literally from in the morning right till the end. Like, I'm talking, like, 10, 11, 12 episodes a day. I wasn't a part of it. Did you watch Marvel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, I don't think I saw it to the end. I definitely like, watched the first three, yeah, four seasons. Cousin, there's just so much drama that I had heard, like, 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 bits you know, yeah, bits and pieces. Of, I was trying to, like, figure out what actually happened. Yeah. You Is that when, that's the first time you saw Melrose Place? To, was yeah. 2008 when you binged it. I, yeah. I watched it when it was inappropriate for me to be watching it. Oh, me too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's when I was watching it. Um, what was so inappropriate, inappropriate about, about it? everything. Yeah. The, if you're, I mean, I don't remember when it came out, but I must have been about 14, 13, 14, 15 years old. I had no business watching Melrose Place at 14. <laughs> All it is is lust and cheating and lying and fighting for no reason. Man, I'd love to go back and watch Melrose Place right now, now that we're talking about it. Yeah. It's got to be terrible. No. Well, it's, the, it holds well, up. I didn't binge it. I didn't binge no, it, but the bit good. that I watched, like, it was it was just good drama, good mm. acting. Yeah. The characters were well rounded. Yeah. Who's is it Jake? It's, I love the like heartthrob in it. The, the bartender guy. Yeah. yeah oh, I know who you're talking about. Wouldn't you the, love uh, to shoot like that though? Yeah, that would be cool. Like I would love to live around a pool like that. Um, I wasn't gonna get into this this early, but speaking about living around a pool, insecure. Are y'all are y'all catch up? Are you caught up? Okay. You're you're all the way to season four. Okay. Um, Wait, we can't talk about it then, because you you're only up to season two. We don't have to go all the way into it. We can talk about things on the periphery. Okay. Um, like Thug Yoda. Who's that? Thug Yoda is the little blood dude that oh. lives in the complex. <laughs> the first time I saw him on screen. I was like, one, I don't know who this person is. Why not? Uh, is he going to be in every episode? He better be, they better find a way to shoehorn him into every episode. Yeah. Uh, Thug, Thug Yoda was amazing. The other thing I had to ask you guys about, when you need to get psyched up in your regular life, do you, much like Issa, go to a mirror and start rapping or yelling or talking to get yourself psyched up it's so funny because i don't do that but it's those scenes that remind me most of myself <laughs> and my best friend <laughs> so i like i guess in this i do that in my head i guess <laughs> yeah yeah like what I'm, I'm curious because i think everybody does something to psych themselves up like that um, like i do talk to myself and like refer to myself in in, in third person like yeah. i'm like a lot of the time i'm like china like get it together <laughs> Yeah, like I don't do it in front of the mirror, but yeah, it happens in my head. And like, just when I'm listening to like, mostly just like hip hop or rap music, it just makes me feel like kind of like, like that girl. And then it's it's so weird. Cause like, I'll just take that energy into like, like a meeting or something. I don't know, or anything that you're nervous about kind of, it just kind of like makes it funner, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I, I guess I've heard that, that girls do like full, full-fledged Beyonce routines every single morning after <laughs> like, hair and makeup and everything before they go out the door. Like, yeah. This, who has the time? I guess you make the time. Mm -hmm. You make the time to present yourself the best way to the world as possible. Yeah. Um, on the flip side of that, y'all, these people are messy. Yeah. They are messy. Oh, you don't even know. <laughs> so you're enjoying it? Like you're enjoying it? So I'm not really a fate person, right? I don't know that I believe things are fated. But what I do know is there are two shows in my life I've known about that I waited to watch. Um, and I feel like allowing them or allowing myself to grow a little bit before I get to the show allows me to enjoy the show even more than I would have if I was younger and hadn't experienced some things. Mm -hmm. Insecure is one of those things where I'm watching it at the right time. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I'm watching it, speaking to you and getting it on the radar and watching it now, it's the right time for me to be watching the show because I get it. The other one is Broad City. I don't know if you've 
Yes. Are you kidding me? That That's is so one of the funny. most underrated shows yes. ever. Yes. So, <laughs> so I knew about Broad City. I knew it was going to be good. And I waited years. Like it finished before I got to it. I was like, this is the right time. I wouldn't have gotten Broad City. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. I wouldn't have gotten it, right? Um, but the, the relationships, like watching women on TV being friends, Mm-hmm. is one of the major things I'm enjoying about these two shows. Oh, right. yeah. uh, I finished Broad City, but in Insecure, right? Um, so, I mean, tell me, how are you feeling? You can go either one. You can go straight into Insecure. We could stay there. You can go to Broad City. Just speak freely. It's so funny that you talk about the shows um, showing like female friendships. Because have you ever heard of the Kinsey test? I think it's called. Mm-mm, no. So it's this test where that most movies and films oh yes I do know what you're talking about yeah 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 I I can't remember what the criteria is it's like two women if there's two women on the screen um and they're either not fighting or not talking about men or something and I think both of these shows would pass that test so that's pretty interesting Broad City I just love that show like I talked about identifying with Issa's character and Insecure Mm -hmm. I feel like I can relate to those two Jewish girls even more (laughs) That is me. That those are. That's my fr- like. I see my friendships in them. Yeah. And just the, just how funny it is. It's just hilarious. Like those scenes when they're in Bed Bath and Beyond. Like I. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even know who's more funnier for me. Like I just equal. Like I like obviously Elena is. I think is funnier, but Abby, her personality <laughs> is just so cute and funny. Like. She, she's, she grounds her, I think. Yeah. yeah I yeah. think that's kind of what it is, is like, she, it's weird to say straight man, like old timey comedy speak, but like, she's kind of the straight man and mm-hmm. Alana gets to go nuts yeah. and she goes nuts. Um, but yeah, it, it dawned on me when I started Insecure and watching Issa and Molly just interact. And then they introduced their other friends as well. I was like, I thoroughly enjoy just watching some women on TV, just being friends. Yeah. Like it's ups. So and- to hear you say that. It's really yeah, it's really nice to hear you say that. Yeah. But it's like the ups and downs, like the goods and bads of of their relationship. There's I mean, so much there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and the stuff that's not said, like the jokes that they jump to, that immediately fill out this space in your head for you of their 20 years of relationship that you never got to see. But the fact that they could just jump to this joke immediately is just such a great character development um, for me in that show. Uh, Do you have favorite characters in Insecure? Like whether they're relatable, whether they're just the fun, like there's a person that brings you like comedic relief. This guy is just so hot. Every time he's on the screen, I'm hoping his shirt comes off, like whatever it is. There's that, but it's in a, it's in a season that you haven't watched yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> but regardless. I, I think I like, I think, I don't really like Molly, but I do feel like I just like relate so much to her. So I think that she would have to be my favorite mm-hmm. almost, I guess. But in, in Broad City, you know how like Elena kind of is like in love with, with Abby yeah yeah I think that that's really cute and I do say see that in just normal friendships because like you you're always seeing your friend you know what I mean like you see her get ready you see her with makeup and you see her like and you see the beauty that she doesn't see so I do think that is kind of like real like it's like a dramatization but I do think that like is like a genuine part of like a real friendship and it it's not even romantic like, no, it's like this obsession <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right and it's weird and i think it's still yeah. healthy yeah it's well. still <laughs> well the, i mean we're talking about a fictional show to a certain degree but it's like even in your own relationships um like you said you're spending so much time with that person um i i heard I heard two guys actually talking about this recently where they don't really have a lot of friends, but they noticed they had like a guy was their real good friend when something happened in his life and he immediately picked up his phone to text him and without even thinking about it. He was like, this thing happened. I got to tell so-and-so, right? And um, like, I think that's what we're seeing 
in these shows where it's just like, there's going to be a romantic partner, but this person is also my person. Yeah, yeah. And right? you have to work on the relationship too. Like you can't just, like, you don't have to take them on dates and stuff. You can't just like be like a waste friend. You got to be like an active, like good friend, you know? Right. Like, oh, they're active with each other. <laughs> you know, it was cool too. Um, Remember when Mal- or Issa was homeless? And Molly was just like, well, you can't stay with me. It just doesn't work. I thought, I really liked that too, because, you know, boundaries are healthy. And, you know, if they had moved in together, it didn't work out. Like you, you're like wasting like a, like a really important friendship. So you got to protect your friendships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Too. It's just like knowing that like you know each other so much that you know there are boundaries yeah. that you should not cross, even though there is some, they, they really do attack some low hanging fruit in this show. Like, when I talk about them being messy, you got uh, Lawrence and Issa on the street in one of these episodes saying some vile stuff to each other. Oh, see, about, I don't remember that. Yeah, there was there was some cheating. Like you know, she she cheated relatively early in the Can show. You talk about that, of course. <laughs> was that cheating though? And like, what is uh, uh, like? <laughs> honestly, okay, okay. Here's my unpopular opinion. Okay. <laughs> That was respectful cheating and respectful cheating should not be a deal breaker. Well, why was it respectful? What happened again? So she was with Lawrence. Yeah. He was without a job for years and years and et cetera. He was trying to figure it out. Um, I believe they that he started to clean his life up. So I think he got a job at Best Buy. That job became another thing. And then um, she was hanging out with the studio guy, with Daniel. And um, she said no once, and then got invited into the studio. There was a session going on, the session ended. And then- Well, he's not a rapper, but studios. Yeah. And then they began. So they actually slept together? Yes. Oh, vigorously. That's that's cheating. <laughs> you know, All over the studio. I, I remember a break. There wasn't a break. Did they have that's a fight? A different show. Did they have a fight before she left the house? Would that be respectful cheating? That's how respectful. how big how big does that fight have to be? I don't because, think you no, mean, I don't think me you mean respectful cheating. I think you mean justifiable cheating. Oh, okay. <laughs> she do, she doesn't know. mean justifiable. You didn't see know. her eyes roll. But okay, if you had a fight, right? Sometimes a fight could be so bad, you could just presume the relationship is done. And then she got herself into that situation. Their relationship status is ambiguous. And it's, she stepped out. (laughs) She didn't cheat, she stepped. Do you remember that when she came home, home was still with Lawrence? Like they were still living together. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Did she, come, but did she come back and sleep with Lawrence, or did she just go to bed? They went to bed together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it was it was cheating. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Mm-hmm. But um, are you mad at her? Well, she's not real, so no. Uh, if she was let's real, pretend, let's pretend, pretend she was like real, Lawrence yeah. is your friend. You know he's been the way he is, and this happened. Like, yeah, are you mad at her? Cheat. I cheating, cheating uh, runs close to my heart. I can't. I can't really. I can't really with cheaters. I can't. Like, I feel. And and to be clear, relationships are so complicated, right? Mm-hmm. And, and other people's relationships are even more, com- we have no idea what's going on in someone else's relationship. Mm-hmm. But for me, I'm like, just leave. Like, just, just get out of it. Oh, she left the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, she left where the cheating could happen. She went to where she could cheat. But I'm like, just leave, just get out of the relationship. But I've never, I've, lucky or unlucky, I've never been in a situation where I'm with someone and someone's like, here, take all of this, come get all of it. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm with somebody. I can't wait. Is that what happened with Lawrence with the girl at the bank? Wait, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that first season, no, you're right. That first season, everybody was getting stuff thrown at them. Okay. Right. Like the lady at the bank wanted Lawrence. Then in season two, 
he lost his uh, credit card or whatever in his car. Mm -hmm. And he went into the grocery store and the two girls behind him paid oh. for his, his liquor. And then they went to the girl's house and then threesome. Oh, wow. I need to rewatch this. I just remember the scene with the girl from the bank. Like that was hot. Yeah. <laughs> He didn't miss out with threesome though, right? He didn't. Did yeah, he 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 didn't he didn't. Um, but all three parties did not get to enjoy all of the merchandise, <laughs> 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 right? So that happened, and those girls moved right on. They just picked it up and kept it moving for another party. But uh, speaking about some of these sex scenes, I have never seen so many male chocolate asses on my television screen until I started watching Insecure. I'm not mad at it. It's beautiful. <laughs> can, I, can I be a nerd for a second? Can I Girl, please, please. <laughs> so, so Insecure, um, I read that they had like a lighting specialist come in. Uh -huh. to, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, to make dark skin glow and look so beautiful on the screen because just normal, normal screens, uh, the way how it normally looks like it comes up like dark skin come, come, comes off looking gray mm. but historically they use like the same filters they used to capture furniture back in the day because it captured the mahogany wood mm. like properly the way that the sellers would want it to capture so basically that's why it looks so nicely and the only reason why we have that technique today is because the furniture seller wanted their furniture to look better, not to make, you know, black actresses look better. Yeah. I remember when you Either told way. me that, that was so interesting. Cause I'm like that everybody is like the mel melanin popping on that popping. show. Yeah, yeah. First of all, that is why I made this show. The <laughs> stories like that is what I want to hear. That is fantastic. <laughs> yes. You know, I didn't Thank know the title you. until today. Don't. Thank don't. you. Oh, sorry. That's fine. That's fine. You, no, I mean, I, I get it. I got, I got, I got, I got technology and stuff. I could just cut you out the whole damn show. So <laughs> you get cut out. This is just gonna be like a Sheena podcast. <laughs> yeah, my one cousin today. Yeah, exactly. Just one. All, all the S's off of cousin is just gonna be cut out. Um, yeah, uh, that that's beautiful, and it makes sad sense that they had to use furniture cameras and filters to capture all this beautiful chocolateness. But like Issa Rae, like further to your comment about these cameras, she is glowing all the time. Like her skin looks amazing in this show. You know what uh, else I noticed about the show and this always happens with shows in the beginning seasons, like the female leads, and it actually depends on how successful the show is. The female leads are like, definitely not plus size, but they're more thicker to regular size. And as the show like gets more successful, they get way skinnier. And I noticed that with her. And it's funny because she didn't, she looks like she was always kind of skinny, but like nowadays her face is like so much, so much thinner. Like mm. it almost looks like, it doesn't even look like weight loss. It looks like she had some sort of procedure done, mm. but she's beautiful either way. Yeah, mm. yeah. We don't care what the size is. She, yeah, I, I will say, I noticed that towards the end of season two, where I was looking at her, like, did she lose a bunch of weight? Like w the clothes are hanging different. Like everything just looks mm -hmm. different. And with actors and actresses, who knows if she was preparing for some other film mm -hmm. or picture that required her to look a certain way. But yeah, I noticed that. I usually notice that on white shows, mm -hmm. typically white shows, it's the reverse. So it's like everybody is skin and bone season one. Really? Yeah. Uh, and then season two, everybody starts to fill back out. They start to fill back out to like a more comfortable weight. And it's like, they know the show's a hit. We're not going anywhere. You can't fire me. <laughs> I'm going to start eating again. <laughs> and it's weird. like, I just went back and watched the first couple episodes of Shit's Creek. I don't know if you guys have watched Shit's Creek. You're watching it this week. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I had watched the whole thing. It's been probably a year since I finished it. Watched the first ep couple episodes, and David is like so skinny. Season or yes, yeah, first couple episodes of season one. Um, Alexis, same thing. Like they're really thin, mm -hmm. um, and I assume they were healthy. But like as the show goes on, they look healthier and healthier. Like they just look like regular, comfortable people. 
And it's kind of sad that they have to do that to get these jobs in the first place. Yeah, yeah. But it is what it is. Um, I think I noticed that with Alana, or is it Abby? Now I'm getting mixed up in Broad City too. Yeah. The pressures of the industry, I guess. Mm -hmm. You guys have anything else but insecure Broad City that you want to throw in? The raise acceptance speech for, she has a funny acceptance speech. Um, It's worth looking up when you have a chance. For what, what award? What uh, year? Essence, I think it's it was Essence. Essence yeah, yeah, it's really okay. yeah it went watching. viral. It's pretty funny. Okay, so Issa Rae's Essence Award winning speech. Everybody look that up. I'll look that up when we're done. Uh- Thank you very much for joining us for episode one of my sit down with my two cousins. Um, once again, please remember to share, like, subscribe, rate, review, comment. And hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you really liked it. Hopefully you heard some new things, some new thoughts. Maybe you disagreed with them. Maybe you didn't. Um, But I hope you tune in next week uh, for episode two, um, where we dig into a more TV movie focused conversation. But I appreciate y'all. Take care. See you in a week. Peace.